Last week on part two of Plan, we see Drist attend the Fighters Academy where he excels beyond his teacher's wildest expectations. Beginning with the second year, he wins the yearly tournament, the Grand Melee, every single year. During one of the patrols, Drist is angered when he realizes a young male child of no consequences was sacrificed for a trial. Vierna meets with her brothers and warns them that a house plans to attack them and that they should keep on their toes. Drist is summoned by the Faceless One in ambush, but Massage and his pet, Guinevar, stop Alton from revealing everything, and they convince Drist it was a lesson. At the day of graduation, Drist leaves the chamber after a young priestess tries to seduce him. Vierna takes him to a cavern and shows him the Driders, the divine punishment of law, and then knocks him over the ledge and leaves him there to die. But Drist awakens in his bed, and his mother tells him if he dishonors Loth again, she will take him and turn him into a rider herself. Drist teams with Gwen on patrols, and the two become a team, much to the disappointment of Massage. Symphony asks the ruling council to turn a blind eye when House Hune attacks House Duerd, and it is agreed. Denon leads Drist's patrol on a surface raid. The group slaughters a group of surface elves, but Drist is too sickened and horrified to participate. When a young elf child runs to him, he, no he simply knocks her over and tells her to stay down and makes it look like she he had killed her, delighting his brother. Before they all return back to the city, they all stare at the sun. Everyone runs in terror and pain, but Drist. Drist stares at the sun in wonderment. And now the conclusion of Homeland. Every day for several days, Senefe Hune has been in constant mystical communion with her spider goddess Loth. Today she gets the news she has been waiting for. Later that day, Matron Senefe has a discussion with her son Massage. She tells them that Malice and House Duerden have lost the Spider Queen's favor. She says that they must move quickly and that the first strike must fall within the next ten cycles. The first battle would be after House Duerden suffered their first loss. Massage asks what will be their sudden loss. Senefe says that their most prized asset, the favored son, Driss Duerden, will fall first, and he must die within ten days. Back at House Duerden, Driss runs into Zachnafane. Driss tells him he's leaving on patrol in the morning. Zachnafane laughs and lightly mocks Driss in his patrol. Driss says he'll be gone a week. Zach suggests when he returns, they spar in the gym like they used to. Driss says yes, and the two walk away, clearly angry with one another. While out on patrol, Driss' group attacks a party of Svarfnebli Deep Gnomes as they are mining the Underdark Caverns for gems. The patrol descends on the Deep Gnomes and begins slaughtering them. Driss gets close to their leader, Belwar Disengulp, but before he can do anything, Belwar summons a rock elemental. Driss begins a series of attacks trying to find a weak spot in the elemental, but is knocked back. Guinevar sees Drist on the ground, and within and without a command from Massage, she lunges at the Elemental, but the Elemental easily slams the cat against the wall. Gwen slumps and collapses onto the cave floor with blood all around her. Seeing this enrages Drist, who tells the Elemental, you are dead, and he begins attacking again, more determined. The tide of battle turns to Drist's favor, who has the Elemental coming. It is at this time that Massage fires a massive lightning bolt at both Drist and the creature. Massage walks over to Driss, thinking that he's dead. He begins to gloat when Belwar knocks him unconscious. Driss awakens to see Belwar, pickaxe in hand, ready to strike. Driss tells him to have his torture and have his evil fun. Belwar says, first nebly, don't torture, the drow elves do. But before Belwar could do anything, the rest of the drow patrol shows up and captures him. Driss asks Massage about Gwen as Massage is rubbing his head. Massage says Gwen is a creature of powerful magic. A little rest on her home plane and she'll be fine, which makes Drist happy. The drow priestess arrives taunting Belwar, but Drist is able to convince them to let him live as a warning to the other Deep Gnomes. Den says to take the Deep Gnomes' hands first. Matron Malice summons a handmaiden of Loth, 
to find out if her house is indeed in danger of an attack. The handmaid confirms it is possible, but will not give the identity since the answer to that question is already known. The handmaid says she will favor her house when battle rings out, but will not answer a question where the answer is already known. Malice tells her daughter to summon the family to see which one is keeping secrets from her. Senefe is outraged when she discovers Massage failed to kill Drist. Massage urges her to let him try again because he wants him dead as well. She agrees, but this time Alton will be with him. She tells them to finish this deed on their lives. Malice interrogates the males of the family as they are knelt to her. She tells them to think of anything out of the ordinary, some sign. Den makes a comment, but is quickly silenced. Driss says one word, Massage. He tells them in the fight against the gnomes, Massage tried to kill him. How he struck Driss with a lightning bolt as he fought the elemental. One of the priests suggests he could have been aiming for the elemental. Driss says Massage waited until he started gaining an advantage on the creature. He then loosed his bolt at him as much as the elemental. Malice is happy to hear this news. She orders scouts to be dispatched. She needs to know the counts of all house who knows soldiers, wizards, and particularly the clerics. Then Malice and her priestess prepare to commune with Loth. This time the handmaiden is not as pleased with the impudence. The handmaiden tells her that even though Duerden had recently pleased the Spider Queen, that one act does not dispel the displeasures her family brought Loth in the recent past. Malice asks which of her family members have brought displeasure to Loth, in which the handmaiden again replies that they will not answer questions when the answers are already known. After the communion, Malice tells her daughters that they have to find out who it is in her family that has invoked the wrath of Loth and quickly so that that person can be punished. Back in the training gym, the time has come for Driss to meet Zach Nefane. Driss wonders what has changed about Zach Nefane his memories or perceptions. Zack mockingly relists all of Drist's exploits as they clash blades. He screams that Drist had killed a girl child on the surface. As Zack Nefane continues to attack, he calls him murderer, child killer. He asks if Drist enjoyed the dying child's screams. As he tries to lower Drist's blades into the cross down maneuver, however, Drist's answer to that is a boot to the face of Zack. Knocking Zack to the ground, at that moment, Triss begins listing all the vile things Zack has done. Zack admits to all of it and says, Do you think Malice would have kept me around if I hadn't? She hates me. Finally, Zack corners Driss with a blade to his throat and is back against the wall. Driss tells Zack the child is still alive. He tells him he killed no elves. Zack says Denon told him otherwise. He says Denon was mistaken, and he made it look like he had killed her, but the child was alive and that the only thing he wanted to kill that day was his companions. Next we see a scrying pool where the matron Malice and the priestesses had watched the whole battle. Now they know who invoked Lost Wrath, and even though they had hoped Driss would come around and accept his station, they decide he will be punished. Upon hearing that Driss had killed no innocent and he had not turned evil, Zach Nefane tells him that he is his father and gives him a hug. He said he trained him all he could and prayed that his honor would not be tarnished. Dress says he will not kill Drow, but Zack says he will either kill or be killed. A few jokes are made at Lost Expense, and then they unite as father and son. A few days later, Dress goes for a walk in the caverns, despite Malice's decree that no one leave the compound in fear of an assassination attempt by House Hunay. Dress does not realize he is being followed by Massage, who summons Guinevere and tells the cat to find Drist and kill him. Drist continues his stroll and is ambushed by Kay Fisher, a deadly underdark creature. Just as the creature starts to reel Drist in for the kill, Gwen attacks the creature, giving Drist the distraction he needs to break free. The two kill the monster, and when Drist asks Gwen, how did you find me? Gwen growls at Drist. First, Drist is confused and thinks Gwen doesn't recognize him, and then he realizes the truth. He knows Massage sent Gwen to kill him and he pleads with Gwen to fight the commands. Gwen lunges at Driss, knocking him off his feet, and instead of killing him, she licks Driss on the face. Driss tells Gwen, take me to your master, your false master.
Summoned at a late hour, Zach Nefaint asks Malice what is the meaning of the summons. She says that Drist is gone. Zach says he is a spirited boy. He will soon return, a minor indiscretion. Malice reveals that Drist has invoked the wrath of Loth and he will be punished. She says that she knows about the gem session between father and son and thought he should know his son was to be ex executed. Zach Nefaint pleads with Malice to spare Drist but she refuses, so Zack offers to take his place instead. Malice agrees. Zack is taken to the sacrificial chamber, laid out on the altar, and sacrificed to Loth. His last words were a plea for Driss to be true to the calling of his heart. Gwen returns to Massage, who asks if Driss was dead. Driss appears and says hardly. Driss pets the cat, and Massage tries to order Gwen to kill Driss, but Driss says, You don't own the cat. Only Gwen owns Gwen. At this point, Alton arrives and tells Driss who he is and what he plans to do. Driss tries to make a deal with Massage to spare his life, but Massage refuses. Alton tries to blast Driss with a lightning bolt, but Gwen takes the blast. Driss tells Gwen to take Alton, in which she does, leaving Massage to Driss. Driss lunges at Massage, but it is an illusion. Alton, near death, realizes that his wand is broken and Gwen was behind him, ready to kill him. He tries to use the broken wand anyway, and it explodes, killing him. Massage jokes and calls Alton a fool for using a broken wand. Driss begins to scale the rock wall Massage is on top of, but is not, but is met with a blast. Driss hangs with one hand on the rock. When Driss tries to climb and pull himself over the ledge, Massage stomps his hand and breaks his fingers. But Driss takes his hand with the broken fingers grabs a scimitar and impels it into Massage. Massage looks at him confused and says, I thought your fingers were broken. In which Driss replies, they are, but they'll heal. And then Massage falls backwards and dies. Driss returns home looking for his father, but instead finds his mother and the rest of the family. He asks where Zack is, but instead of telling him, Malice scolds him for leaving, but that he had urgent matters that he did not want to bother her with. He tells her about Massage and the Faceless One and how they tried to kill him and that the Faceless One was really Alton Dever. He tells her he killed both Alton and Massage, which pleases his mother. He asks where Zack is again. She goes, she says that he has served his purpose. This enrages Driss for Driss realizes that Zack is dead. Accusing Matron Malice of killing him for that damnable Spider Queen. Malice says, no, you did when you spared the elven child and invoked the lost wrath. Enraged, Driz says, you sacrificed Zack for that damn spider queen. He says that Zack went willingly to, to the altar to spare Driz and that Driz will fall in line as the house's new weapons master. Driz pulls something out of his belt and strikes it on the ground, emitting a gigantic burst of light, blinding everyone in the room. When the light fades, Driz is gone. Outside the city of Menzo Berenzon, the city of his birth, Driss summons Guinevar, and the two walk away into a cavern, leaving Menzo Branson behind them. The end. I hope you enjoyed this three-part look into the adaptation of Ari Salvatore's Homeland. I really did have a blast making it. Like I said, this is one of my favorite novels ever. If you want to see me do more of the novelizations from Ari Salvatore, please uh, answer in the comments below. Tomorrow night, Saturday, June 24th, will be the debut of my weekly live show, Into the Commaverse. Looking forward to that. I'm going to be doing a 200 subscriber giveaway. So I hope everyone hang, uh, hope everyone jumps on for that. It should be a lot of fun. I'm going to give away some cool books. And I got a mystery game prize. I hope I'm not overhyping it too much. But I hope everyone enjoys that. And then next week, for Tony's Comic Spotlight, We'll be taking a look at the 50th anniversary of the death of Gwen Stacy when we spotlight Amazing Spider-Man issue number 122. Till next time, be safe, take it easy, and God bless. See ya.